All right, we on? Are we good? <laughs> anyway, uh, my other thing got the the one one like, so uh, I will be following up and reading, you know, six thousand proposal contests. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> uh, I may have to break this into two, depending on how long these are. Maybe. I like the differences between commas and dashes. Anyway, I'm just going to go down the list. So the first one is Prophecies by Stareby. All right. Official note from the O5 Board of Directors, due to repeated questions over the recent allocation of resources, all personnel in the southern United States are required to read this document, which serves as an official announcement for the SCP-6000 project. Item number, SCP-6000, Object Class, Euclid, Level 4, Level 4, 6000, Classified, Canyonlands National Park, Utah. Special containment procedures. As SCP-6000 has currently not been built, the following containment procedures have been written in advance to be put into place once SCP-6000 is constructed. SCP-6000 will require an active police force. This will serve two purposes, one of which is simple and general law keeping and protection of private property. Due to the fact that SCP-6000 is officially classified as a foundation site, there will be sensitive information and classified anomalous material present. The second purpose of SCP-6000 is, oh, hold on, I lost my place. Second purpose of the SCP-6000 police force will therefore be to prevent citizens from accessing said material and, in the event that it is accessed, perform necessary amnestination, amnestication, that's not a word, procedures. This purpose will require the police force to be made up of trained foundation operatives. In the interest of increasing tourism and revenue for SCP-6000, the public display of the central hub of some visually interesting low-threat anomalies has been sanctioned by the O5 Board of Directors. In order to preserve the veil, these anomalies will be given appropriate natural explanations. Some anomalies currently scheduled for display are a colony of SCP-98, a large sampling of SCP-1006, and some SCP-111 specimens. The respective containment procedures for all displayed anomalies will be maintained and followed as normal. The construction and presence of SCP-6000 is projected to cause minor damage to the ecosystem and landscape within Canyon's Na Canyonlands National Park. Legal funds will be set aside to lobby for suppression of negative media concerning SCP-6000. Models show that negative impacts to the ecosystem and landscape should disappear within 30 years. Description. SCP-6000 is the official designation for an expansive foundation-led urban project currently slanted for construction early 2054. Plans for SCP-6000 include high-rise residential districts, central business and tourism hub, and a transport network. Additional construction and development will be planned as SCP-6000's population increases. Canyonlands National Park, Utah, has been chosen as the location for SCP-6000 due to its natural beauty and potential for tourism. SCP-6000 was conceptualized by the O5 Board of Directors after a successful smaller scale urban planning venture, such as the construction of the monorail transport system in San Antonio, Texas. These initiatives were a result of a larger structural recognition reorganization made necessary by severe financial losses as a result of the Xi'an incident. In the years since, this reorganization has been a resounding success, allowing the Foundation to expand its ventures beyond anomaly containment. When fully populated, SCP-6000 is projected to have an initial population of around 3 million citizens. Continued growth models predict that this population will rise to 7 million within 20 years, which would make it the second largest city by population in the United States. An official municipal title for use by the public is currently under consideration. If successful, more cities of the same model as SCP-6000 can be constructed around the world. 
Current regions slanted for future development include Zhangji Jiaji, Zhangjiaji National Forest Park in China, Wadi Rum in Jordan, Komodo National Park in Indonesia, and the Black Forest region of Germany, each selected for similar reasons as SCP-6000. Addendum. Notice from the administrator. Oh boy, there's another one. A notice from the administrator. In the coming months, we will officially break ground on SCP-6000. This is undoubtedly an exciting time. It represents the culmination of years of planning involving thousands of important personnel. But even more than representing the end of this planning stage, it represents the beginning for the new age of the found. It represents the beginning of a new age for the foundation, a shining new era for all of us. SCP-6000 is not just a new age for us as an organization. It's a step forward for the entire world, a gift that we are graciously giving to them. It will stand tall above the Canyonlands, not known as SCP-6000 to them. Instead, it will be christened as Manoa. Explorers spent hundreds of years searching for the lost city of gold in the Amazon, and we are hoping to give a world, the world a place equally as glorious as those legends. The Administrator and the O5 Board of Directors. Supplementary information, O5 eyes only, credentials accepted. Oh boy. Located approximately 10 miles out of SCP-6000, the warehouse containing the massive database corruption, massive database corruption, massive database corruption, blah, 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 blah. System failure. Information in this document has been corrupted by a massive server storage error. The information archived in the Central 6000 server. Please contact... Oh! <coughs> error. Please contact Central Support for the information. Uh, only retrieve information within your clearance level. Retrieval of information above your clearance level will result in disciplinary action. Error, 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 error. The day of purification. Error, 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 error. Massive database, massive database. Skip net access attempt, skip net access attempt, skip net cloud access, skip net cloud access attempt successful displaying email archives. To nickware at gmail.com from um, amedb12 at scpmail.net. Subject, my name is Ahmed. Can't tell you how excited. Oh my gosh, it's so long. <sighs> Maybe I'll just read one of these at a time. I can't tell you how excited I was to get your email. It's been weeks sending these out into the void, hoping for a response. And it's been months since I talked to anyone outside the little community we have here. I suppose it's a miracle anyone here survived, I suppose. Whatever happened, it started in Manoa and, and the other cities and spread out. Anyway, yeah, to answer your question, yes, I worked for them. I worked for them. Nothing high up. Uh, what the frick? Nothing high up, just simple data entry out of college. Maybe it was irresponsible of them to give clearly sensitive data to people fresh out of college, but that's irrelevant now. No one has heard from anything from high-level people since it all happened. I mean, they were kind of strange anyway. They more or less appeared out of nowhere one day and started building banks and then cities. But anyway... So you say there is a larger community of people down in New Zealand. That's cool. It's nice to hear about pockets of survivors like us. Although I heard something about a large pocket of survivors somewhere in the Middle East that just died off. Sorry, I know that's morbid. I'm sure we'll be fine. So much of the data on these computers was lost during what happened. I've been trying to look through them, but the search function is completely ruined, so I have to do it all manually. <coughs> Reading is hard. There's so much to look through. I'm not really sure what I'll find. I might be the only person in the world right now to, with access to the information here. If I find anything interesting, I'll send it along. Ahmed. Welcome to Manoa. By now, I'm sure you've begun to settle into your living space in the world's most advanced city. This is simply a welcome notice from the town council saying how excited we are about having you here and anyone else in your household. If you live in one of the state-of-the-art high-rises... You'll surely have already taken the glor in the glorious views of Canyonland that surround us. If you reside elsewhere, a monorail journey will bring you to a building where you can take it in. <laughs> Why is that funny? It's not funny. You'll probably be spending a lot of your time in the central hub. This is the financial and cultural center of Manoa. So if you don't have a job already lined up... Oh, you can hear that. Alright, I'll stop. Uh... So if you don't have a job already lined up, then you can travel down there at any time and see what you can find. The hub also contains many of our most important 
many of our tourist attractions attractions, such as our art museum and the bestiary, which contains many creatures that were previously unknown to science. Our brand new attraction is the officially licensed Canyon Lines Tour. Our fleet of all-terrain vehicles will take you a few miles outside of Vanoa along a designated route to see the natural landscape and maybe spot some of the animals that call it home, such as hawks, black bears, and bighorn sheep. So to sum everything up, welcome to Manoa, and we hope you enjoyed the years you spent in humanity's newest great city. To Nick Ware from Ahmed B. Re. So I found this and thought it was pretty funny. I remember getting one of these when I moved into my tiny little studio apartment in one of the high rise apartments. Why is apartment twice? Eh, whatever. This was like, this just came out yesterday. Today, actually. Uh, I already had a job with the foundation lined up, so on my first day I went down to the beach jury. It was pretty interesting. Those crab things were creepy little buggers. I don't, I don't know. Uh, all they did was make clicking noises and swarm near the glass when you got close. Some of the new species they found in, in some of the new species they found in New Caledonia. That's what they said on the inf that's what it said on the information signs. Places like New Caledonia probably got it worse. At least we still have dry land to live on. They probably have nothing now. I was thinking about I was thinking the other day about what I miss most. Probably bird song. I remember it used to be more or less my alarm clock to wake me up for school. It was only 20 or 25 years ago, but there may as well have been but it may as well have been hundreds. Of course, it was the biggest animals that went first. They need more food, I suppose. When all the plants you eat are toxic, you're not going to last long if you weigh a ton. I haven't heard bird song in years now. Heck, I haven't even seen a bird that wasn't a skeleton in years either. But that's great. But that's great that you got a little farm going down on there. I didn't think anyone would be able to grow anything. We certainly can't. A woman here tried to start, start a roof tried to start a roof garden last year, but nothing took to soil. So we've been living off canned food. And nobody has any idea how much of that stuff is actually left. How much of that there is actu actually is left. It's weird diction syntax, I don't know. Sorry, English teacher. If it runs out, I have no idea what we're going to do. We'll just be stuck in the middle of this wasteland with nothing. Building a city in the middle of the freaking desert was a stupid idea, but I suppose they didn't expect the world to end. Have you been in contact with anyone else? Anyone in America, maybe? They need to know that there's a community of people here. Anyway, I'll keep looking through these files. There's just so much. Ahmed. Monthly inspection of the SCP-6000 monorail system has pr produced the following information and requests. Jeez, we're not even halfway there. Uh, several monorail cars have experienced vandalism. MPD involvement has become necessary. Since last inspection, a pair of golden equals, Aquila Chryseatos, has constructed a nesting site on one of the monorail track scaffolds. Due to the past years of low golden eagle populations in the area, the prompt removal of the nest created a scene. An extension of the track to connect it to the Jeep tour system has been proposed. There has been some general wear to parts of the track system. Map with the specific parts that need repairs will be relayed soon. The current supply of SF1 is running low. Please put in a request for at least 20 new canisters. To Nick Ware from Ahmed B. I found this little monorail report document report document and thought it was pretty interesting. No one has seen any big animals for some time. And then a pair of golden eagles sets up a nest right next right under the monorail. Of course, it got removed within a day, but I remember how excited everyone was to see something like it. In case you're wondering, MPD is Manoa Police Department. Uh. Excuse me. Never liked them. Police in any city are sketchy at the best way, at the best anyway. But in Manoa, they acted more like security guards in a building than a police force upholding law in a city, if, if that makes any sense. Something I don't know is what the heck SF1 is. Maybe it's some kind of cleaning formula, but I've never heard of it. Thinking about the golden eagle nest has got me thinking about how it all happened. I remember the news articles about patches of trees dying off, but it was hand-waved anyway. Then Germany, and then just collapse. Bad memories. Foundations had so much knowledge, but it was obvious, and that was obvious when I just started working here. 
but I'm going to focus my search a bit more and see if I can find out if they knew anything about what happened. Ahmed. Interviewed. Mok Mokhamed Indrawan. Mokhamed Indrawan, local resident. Interviewer, Dr. Anan, posing as an Indonesian police detective. Forward. Injawan was intercepted by Foundation operatives after attempting to raise concerns about an incident he encountered in, upon in a small cove. He liked he lived in a small village only a short walk away from 6000 K in Komodo National Park. All text has been translated from Indonesian into English. Begin log. So, what were you doing in the area? I take my son out for fishing in that cove at least once a week. It's only a 30 minute walk away from our village, and it's the rich richest fishing spot you can get without needing to take a boat out. And the view is even greater nowadays because you can see the city on the next island across. So you don't think anything was wrong. You weren't going down there to try and investigate anything. I've already told you more than once. No, we just happened to be there. That was all. Are you going to tell me why it happened, or please continue with your account? We don't have an explanation as of yet. Alright. Before we even reached the cove, the first thing we noticed is the smell. My son's eyes started watering, but we kept going. Taking him fishing there is always the highlight of his week. I hate it when we can't go. Can you describe the smell you experienced in more detail? It's hard to describe. When I was 11, a small building where we kept some animals and farm equipment caught a light while we were away. We didn't get back for a week, and when we returned, there was a stench of burnt plastic and charred flesh that had already started to rot. That's what it smelt like when we walked up that path. Was there anything detectable in the air? Any abnormal weather conditions? No, it was completely clear until we got close. Beautiful blue skies. Okay, please continue. We kept on and went down through this passage into the rock. When we finally came onto the beach, and my son nearly fainted from the stench, I had to grab onto him. Was the entire beach covered? Yes, the sand there is beautiful and white, but it was all just covered in this orange sludge. And there was a haze coming up from all the bodies, a fa wait, orange sludge? Yeah, it's the third impact. <laughs> there was a haze coming up from all the bodies, a fog. The bodies? The bodies of the sea creatures, the corpses of the sea creatures, all kinds, small fish, octopuses, crabs, eels, I guess whatever had happened to, whatever happened had grouped all the smaller fish together, which must have looked ap appetizing to the larger animals, because when I walked out a bit closer to the water, I could see the corpse of a manta ray, probably the biggest I've ever seen. I've fished these waters all my life, and I've hoped to see one that big, but not like that, not one in that way. Was it just aquatic animals? The smell of all that fish must have been pretty tempting, and it lured out a Komodo dragon. It was dead with a fish still in its mouth, already starting to rot itself. And what was your son doing at that point? I told him to go back up the stairs and wait. I didn't want him to see all that. Did you stay for much longer? How could I? This, bro. All right, someone's, someone's ringing my doorbell. Hold on. This is just a package. Okay, where was I? How much longer? Did you stay for much longer? Oh, could I? The stench was terrible when we were just nearby. It was practically unbearable on the beach. I could taste it. I could feel it in my lungs. Did you tell anyone else after leaving the scene? No. I took my son back home, then went straight to my boat to cross the sea into the city so I could tell someone. I see. Do you have any idea what caused it? <coughs> We're still attempting to figure that out. I've seen pollution before. Many people dumping used car batteries and things into the ocean where it can poison a school of fish. But nothing like that. Nothing comes close to what's on that beach now. Thank you, Mr. Indrawan. In Indrawan, you can leave now. But you, you must have some idea what's caused it. The sea is my livelihood. And one day it'll be my son's livelihood. And then his son's. You can't just be completely unaware. It's a developing situation. We don't know until we've performed the necessary test tests. I want to speak to someone more qualified. I want to speak to an expert. This was so close to where me and my family live. I, You can speak to an expert if you wish. 
Please just allow my associate to escort you out. Indrawan is let out. Dr. Anand sighs, leans back in his chair. Oh, shoot. And turns on his radio. Please make sure he is amnesticized. Am amnesticized. And find out if his son has told anyone else before getting him anesthetized too. Has a report come back from the cleanup yet, Dr. Serrano? Serrano? Yes. You want to hear it now? Or should I... What should Serrano's voice be? Yes. Do you want to hear it now? Or should I give you the report in person? <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Yes. Do you want to hear it now? Or should I give you the report in person? No. You can tell me now. We tested a few fish in that huge manta ray. All tissue samples showed copious levels of SF1. Shoot. What should we do? Shelf it as a coincidence and move on. You know what happened to that team who reported you know what happened to that team who reported the same thing in the processing planet in Norris. Nor 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 Ilsk. Nor Ilsk. Of course. Who knows? Maybe it really is a coincidence. Let's hope so. Mukhamad Indran and his son were successfully amnesticized within the hour. Cove was cleaned up and successfully opened within 48 hours. The animal deaths reported have been attributed to pollution from an illegal waste dumping found just outside 6,000k. Oh my gosh. How long is this? I would scroll down, but I don't want to accidentally see something. Well, found this. It's awful, the poor man having to find that, especially with his son. I was never sure if amnesti amnestication was real. It was just a rumor among us low-level, low-wage employees. But I guess it's actually a thing. At least he could forget what he saw. He said you had no idea what SF SF1 is either. But here it is again. And this time it sounds even stranger. What the frick is it? And why is it such a big deal that it was found in these fish? I, I haven't been able to find anything specifying what it is. Just a few documents mentioned. And it all seems so casual. It's obviously an acronym for something. But no document I've ever found expands upon it. I do remember hearing vague rumors about stuff like what the men described happening, but no one ever took it seriously. I mean, it just sounds like an oil spill. And oil spills aren't really that uncommon. Remember the one off the coast of Bermuda in 2049? I remember going to a protest about it. Do you? <laughs> Maybe you weren't that type. I don't know. Maybe if the protest had upped their game, the collapse wouldn't have happened. I gotta keep looking, but I need a break. I've been sitting in this dark room for so long, searching for stuff. I need to go and talk to people in the community again for a while. I've been sitting in this dark room for so long, searching for stuff, that I need to go and talk to people in the community again for a while. I've run out of food here anyway. I'm at incident report. I'm on the warehouse, Jordan. A minor incident. <laughs> A minor incident has occurred in the warehouse outside of Amman, Jordan, which serves SC, which serves 6,000 WR. The facility briefly lost electrical power for 45 minutes, resulting in some minor damages to products being moved across the warehouse floor when one of the ceiling lights in the facility wore out. The products are believed to be electrical parts, and an immediate inspection of the warehouse supply of Siberia Fuel 1, SF1, revealed them to be unharmed. A more thorough inspection has been scheduled, but no long-term damage is projected to have occurred to any important products. Instant report written by warehouse manager Tarane. Tarane. Trelawney. Alright, we good? We're finally freaking halfway to Nick Wer from Ahmed B. I can't believe it. I found out what the acronym means. <laughs> and in such a stupid document too. Not even something important. SF1 is Siberia fuel. That's one mystery solved. It's pretty self-explanatory what it is now. I think Russian oil. Should be simple as that. At least I have full terms to search for now. I hope I don't miss anything. I hope I didn't miss anything interesting because I was just looking for SF1. There's far too much to go back over and check now. It's funny. You also went to one of those Bermuda protests. I remember the news covering protests all over the world about it. Funnily enough. I don't remember any protests about Foundation Cities. I mean, you'd think there would have been some people rightfully protesting over stuff like fracking, but when a whole gigantic city is built in the Canyonlands, one of the most beautiful places in the country, it's nothing. 
It's strange. I think sometimes I regret moving here and taking that job with the SCP. It paid well. There was definitely a novelty about living in the city of the future. But if I had known there was no future, I probably would have moved somewhere that wasn't an inhospitable wasteland. Maybe Oregon. My brother lives up there. Always said it was pretty. He was a tour guide on a whale watching boat. Obviously, can't do that now. If he's even alive. Maybe it's a good thing if he isn't. He used to tell me, probably jokingly, but still. And he wouldn't want to live in a world without whales. <laughs> you can totally hear that. Uh, sorry, that's too morbid. I know. I'll keep looking. Are you sharing these with other people over there? Ahmed? Um, okay, so this is foundation. So it goes day, month, year. Uh, 6th of May, 2050. The ex this expedition log is being started at the point where we are 40 miles out from the nearest large settlement. From here on, we're definitely on our own. There's eight of us on the team, and we've been given enough resources to find our way there and back. A few months ago, Foundation Satellite noticed a gigantic thermal patch that was spewing heat to the atmosphere in the wilderness around the Sakhar Republic in Siberia. And it's only getting bigger. The Foundation doesn't want to cause an incident by flying a plane into Russian territory. So we're just here to see what it is and report back. Not much to report as of now. Set up a camp by a small stream. I'm, it's absolutely beautiful out here. One of the few untouched places still left on this planet. I mean, beautiful natural places exist, still exist, but not like this anymore. We're still away. We're still away off from the thermal patch, according to the maps. We'll set off again in the morning, 9th of May, 2050. Okay, just, just making sure. Uh, 9th of May, 2050. Last few days have been uneventful. It quickly becomes obvious that the taiga isn't a landscape of variation. It's stunningly gorgeous, definitely. But it's the same features for miles and miles and miles. Pine trees, a stream, then over a hill, and it's the same again. Put that on repeat for the last few days, and here we are again. Camping by a stream next to a hill. We've seen a few animals, though. Saw a small herd of reindeer next to a lake. And Masaki swears that he saw a bear last night when we were all asleep. But I think we've all chosen to act like he's just making that up. The place is imposing enough without thinking about bears watching us. And I mean that. It really is imposing. I almost feel like we're in space. We're probably the first humans to ever pass through here. It feels like a place that doesn't want us to be here. It's not for people. At least... Not for people apart from those who have been here for thousands of years and know the land. But we haven't encountered any indigenous people as of yet. Sometimes, it feels like the trees just close in on you, especially when we're huddled around a campfire. And all you see in each direction is darkness and trees. I'll be happy when we finally get to that thermal patch, but I think it's still a while off. At least 60 or 70 miles. It's what the map says, anyways. 13th of May, 2050. We finally found something. It's not the patch, but it's definitely strange enough to be noteworthy. We've reached a point in the journey where we can use the path of a large stream to take our way... Where we can use the path of a large stream to take us all the way up to the thermal patch. While walking alongside, we stumbled upon the corpses of two reindeer down by the water. The stream bends a bit where we found them, so water and debris collected on a small pocket on the side. This small pocket was covered with this strange orange sludge. It smelled abhorrent, and we got out of there as soon as possible. A gas leak of some kind, maybe? No one knows, really. But we're not here to find out by the... We're, but we're not here to find out the cause of death of some reindeer. So onwards we moved. Another night, another camp by the stream. I could tell the mood was a little sour because of the reindeer. But I think it's gone... I think it was gone by the end of the night. We just want to get there and be done with this. It's not been that long out here, but it feels like an eternity. As I write this, we're only a couple miles out from the patch. It's not been the best day. Following up on the path of the stream, we found a few groups of corpses. Wait, hold on. Feels like an eternity. 15th of May, 2050. As I write this, we're only a couple miles out from the patch. It's not been the best day. Following up the path of the stream, we found a few groups of corpses. It was the same thing, 
It was the same as the first time. Right next to the water, right next to the gathering of this orange liquid. Maybe it's just gas leaks. I feel like we'd smell gas if that were the case. And not what we did smell. I think it's starting to creep the team out. I'm trying to keep them calm, but like I said, this place still takes its toll on you. It's imposing. Things we shouldn't be worrying about compared to our goal become all the more worrying. We're so far from people. And as we're heading towards this unknown place, we keep finding dead animals. Maybe they're right to be worried. We'll be at the site. <laughs> we'll be at the site tomorrow anyway. 16th of May, 2050. We're here. We found it. At the point on the map where the thermal patch was spotted, the trees suddenly stopped, and we walked out into a large clearing. The only thing growing in the clearing was short grass, and aside from that, it was completely barren of any plant life. We knew instantly what we had reached at the site. After taking notice of the barren nature of the area, the next thing our eyes were drawn to was the hole. Towards the middle of the clearing was a hole about three meters wide, right next to a stream that was running through the middle of the field. We set up a perimeter around it and peered inside. We couldn't see anything, so it's extremely deep, and we know that for sure. We've set up camp back in the forest as I write this. Nobody really wanted to set up camp in a clearing, or anywhere near where we could see the hole. And I don't blame them. It's creepy for a few reasons. Firstly, it's just completely quiet. As soon as we got out of the tree line, the sounds of birds and the wind rustling the trees just stopped. It was like someone flipped a switch to turn off the noise. It was just nothing aside from the sound of the stream and our own footsteps. Second reason is obvious from the map. It's just hot. Not unbearable, but enough to make you sweat, and with all the gear we're carrying, nobody wants to stay out there for long. But, I know we'll have to go into the hole in the next few days. We're here to survey the site in its entirety, and that includes whatever's down there. Nobody wants to, I can tell, but that's the job. 17th of May, 2050. We spent today setting up all the equipment from around the hole. From, wait, setting up all the equipment around the... Stir by. Come on. Come on. I had I had expectations. I have higher... I, I had I had like higher expectations. Come on. You were doing so well. Oh. It's just a notification that you can't see or hear. We spent today setting up all the equipment around the hole, everything out of the boxes and assembled. So that's thermal equipment, Geiger counters, Hume counters, and the most complex of all, the rope pulley system. Tomorrow, we're going to lower Martinez into the hole to do an initial survey. All of us except Gillespie are going in. I know he's relieved. He knows all the equipment better than anyone, so he has to stay out and monitor everything, and it's not his choice, but I can't help but feel that he's lucky. Nothing else to report from today, we're just back at the camp away from the clearing. The equipment looks strange reflecting in the moonlight. I guess we just got used to seeing nothing but plants in the natural landscape that seen something man-made jutting up from the ground is jarring. Just a short log today, tomorrow we go in, then we can go home. <laughs> today was obviously eventful, I'll try and summarize it as best I can. Martinez went to the hole first. We strapped him up properly, rigged him to the pulley system, gave him a torch, and then he went in. It's obviously a tense time when he was down there. It didn't take long to completely vanish from view, even though the sky was clear and the sun was coming down on us. Which should have provided a view inside, but after a few meters of rope were used up, we couldn't see him at all anymore. But, ten minutes later, and he tugged on the rope to be pulled back up, and he appeared again, unharmed. He told us that he went down into the hole and shined the torch all around him. All he could see was an underground lake stretching as far, and all around him he could see an underground lake stretching as far as he could see. He also said that there was. Okay. He also said that there was a small island that we could lower ourselves down to if we adjusted the rope pulley system and we moved it along a short way. I don't know if you could hear that, uh, but, like, if you did, you know why. I laughed. 
Yes, so there was a small island if we moved it a short ways. So that's what we did. I was the second one to go in the hole after Martinez went back in. He didn't mention how far down the island in the middle was. So I was suspended in your darkness for what seemed like ages until my feet f touched down on a rocky surface. I moved to the side and waited for the five more who were coming down to be lowered in. When everyone was on the island, Gillespie sent a group of torch drones to light everything up. When we could see where we are, Ma when we could see where we were, Martinez was proven right. We were standing on a small island in the middle of a gigantic lake. It didn't take long for us to realize that it was not a lake of water. It was really hot down there, not like the other underground lakes I've been to where the temperature is crisp. And as the drones got close to the lake surface, we saw the lake was dark orange. So we crouched down, took samples of the liquid in containers, then tugged up on the rope to be pulled back up. We crouched down and took samples of the liquid into containers. And then tugged on the rope to be pulled back. I don't know why I thought that was weird when I read it the first time. You can always expect the worst going into situations like this, but this definitely wasn't a worst case scenario. Still, I was glad to be getting out of there, both because of the heat and the fact that we're pretty sure we discovered an anomaly of some kind. Even though I've been with the Foundation for 17 years, there's always some uneasy feeling when you encounter the, un when you encounter the unknown. It took us a while to pack everything away. We weren't supposed to test the liquid in the field, but we decided to open up one of the containers and briefly expose it to the air. We still had a lot of sealed up containers of the liquid, so it didn't really matter. And that's when hell broke loose. Misaki was off on the side smoking, and an ember from the cigarette got caught in the wind and landed in the open container. It caught a light instantly, a gigantic white flame. I quickly dropped it, and it was like the container was propelled. The flame bursting it halfway across the clearing before it landed. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Um, we secured everything else and quick... We secured everything else quickly before walking over to the container, which was still flaming. And it just kept flaming. For hours. The night came, and we set up camp in the forest, but we could still see the light from the fire in the clearing. I write this just before I go to sleep. It must be around 1 a.m. now, and it's still going strong. I, I, I think we'll be keeping the lids on the containers from now on. 19th of May, 2025. When I woke up this morning, the flame had finally stopped burning. The container was slightly charred, but when we picked it up, only about a quarter of the lid was gone. It burned for hours, and it barely leaves anything up. I've never seen a material with such a quality like that before. I can't help but imagine the whole lake below us catching a light. But we've done our job, and now it's time for those at the lab to do theirs. Our only goal now is getting home. We've left the clearing behind and are a good few miles away from it. Traveled longer than we usually do in a single day. I could tell the team wanted to put distance between us and the clearing, the hole, and the lake. It's strangely calming to be back in the forest again. I know I spoke about how imposing it was, but it seems like a comforting old home compared to that clearing. But it won't be too long before we swap out the towering trees for towering buildings again. Unless any notable events occur... On the journey back, this will be the final noted log. This log has been penned by Team Leader Kilmov. To Nick Ware, from Ahmed B. I know it's been a while since my last email, but I think the wait is worth it. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe I should just stop looking, because each document I find makes me feel worse. Journey into the wilderness of Siberia, where a team finds a mysterious, highly flammable, and durable liquid. I guess it all adds up. Such a creepy... There's something so creepy about that whole thing. I I know from when I worked at the foundation, from when I worked there, that the foundation dealt in strange things. There's no way of logging and dealing with data without actually getting to at least a bit of without actually getting at least a bit of a look at that data. But it's like a rabbit hole. There's so much that I've seen that's not relevant to this that makes me know this is an iceberg. I've always thought that they were some kind of clandestine organization like the NSA or the CIA. Now I know that both terms I can look for. Now I know both terms that I can look for. SF1 and Siberia fuel. It's easier. I, I hope it won't be as long 
next time until I as long next time until I email you again. I've found so many documents that contain the terms now. But most of it is just minor incident reports like the one in Jordan where they were relieved that none of the fuel was damaged. After reading that expedition log, I know something bigger was going on. I just need to pinpoint it. Ahmed. Forty minutes? Okay. Alright. Alright, Siberian material test. A simple steam engine concept, a small sample of SM? Does that say SM? Oh, Siberian material, okay. I guess that's before it was termed a fuel. It was placed in a metal basin below a spinning wheel. The metal basin was then heated. Result. SM1 produ began producing a steam-like substance almost immediately, which began to spin the wheel above the basin at an immense speed. Spinning continued for approximately 10 hours before slowing down. Emptying the basin revealed that only approximately 15% of SM1 had been used up during the course of the test. Test. A small car was custom-built and fitted to be able to accept SM1 as a fuel source instead of gasoline. The car was driven by D9986. Uh, excuse me. Result. As soon as D9986 pressed down on the acceleration, the vehicle reached top speed almost immediately. As soon as it reached almost immediately. I don't know. That, that, that seems kind of weird. D-9986 having to take evasive action to avoid the car crashing into the opposite wall of the testing site. After being instructed to drive laps around the testing site for three hours, the car was inspected. There was significant wear to the tires and internal parts of the car consistent with overuse, despite the vehicle being brand new. Test. Similar circumstances to the second test, except this time it was done using a large armored vehicle. The vehicle was driven by D-9789. Results similar to test 2, vehicle reached full speed almost immediately despite the larger size and energy requirements, and when the test was concluded, the vehicle showed the same signs of wear as those in test 2. SM1's capacity for use as a fuel source has been conclusively determined. Far larger scale testing of SM1 as a fuel source. Site, 23, site 233M is a small production plant that manufactures armor for MTF teams. Several of the canisters from the Siberian expedition were taken. And all regular sources, and all regular fuel sources in the site were swapped out for the liquid. After, a res, after and result, and the results after a week were collected. Results. After a week of using SM1 as an alternative fuel source, a team of inspectors reviewed the site. After a week of the switch, the population, the production plant noted a 55% increase in the amount of products manufactured, without any major changes to the machinery beyond a few repairs to the machinery to the machines that had gathered wear. With some refining of the raw product to fix this wear effect, SM1 could be a serious boost to Foundation operations. A vast majority of the product collected from the Siberia expedition is still unused. Test. Due to the resounding success of the fuel substance of the, of the substitution of fuel at Site 233M, next step the next step was same substitution at a full site. Site 909 in not Namibia in Namibia was chosen due to its remoteness and large size. This time effects were given two weeks to be observed. Results. After two weeks of observation, similar effects at site 909 Y909 <laughs> uh, were noted. As a containment site instead of a manufacturing site, a production change was unable to be observed. But the site was noted as being far more energy efficient and containment equipment was able to be operated at a higher strength for far longer, improving security and safety. At this stage, a change in the designation for the liquid has been commissioned to Siberia Fuel, SF1. <laughs> oh, this is from the O5s. Um, last, last week, a large-scale expedition was launched into Siberia, Siberia to refine the origin site of SF1. We are happy to say the expedition has been successful, and a large quantity of SF-1 has been brought back for use. After several site directors expressed interest in converting their sites to running on SF-1 instead of traditional fuel, we can say we are allowing for any interested site directors to, uh, to use SF-1 if they please. If the following large-scale switchovers are successful, then we can sees the complete replacing of traditional fuels with SF-1 within a few years. 
An extraction and refinery plant has already been slated for construction in Siberia for large-scale removal and processing of SF-1 for Foundation use. Hopefully, this new tool will take us strides into the future, which is where we need to be. Our urban planning initiatives have been immensely successful so far, and SF-1 will enable us to go even further than we could have imagined, the O5 Board of Directors. To Nick from Ahmed, they used it. They freaking used it with barely even a concern for safety. The benefit of hindsight is almost like a superpower. I can look back on these things as if they were happening in real time, knowing that in a few years it'll all be gone. It's a superpower of sorts, but it's also a curse. I can't go back and warn them. I can't warn them that the world as they knew it would be coming to an end. It truly feels awful. I think sometimes it's about what end of the world means. Maybe if we're still here and the world hasn't truly ended, but if there are no forests, no swamplands, no grasslands, and no coral reefs, is it even a world? There's probably more people in a, there's probably more people in the world than there are animals. And there isn't and there can't be more than a few million or so people are in the world. As always, I I'm gonna keep looking, but I can't help feeling like I shouldn't. I'm at monthly sale report of SF one. 50 canisters to the U.S. Department of Defense, 45 canisters to Lockheed Martin Corporation, 50 canisters to China Site Construction Engineering, 20 containers to Deutsche Lufthansa AG, 45 containers to Sakoda Auto, 60 containers to IBM, 50 containers to Air Arabia, 40 containers to LG Electronics, 15 containers to Savic. Monthly sales report for June 2052. To Nick from Slender, re-subject. Oh, from sender. Resubject. Oh, it's unfinished. Totally unfinished. I mean, like, yeah, I guess it's not like the contest doesn't end until like a week from now. But like, come on, come on, come on, stir by. You, 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 you. you, you, you people like me reading this on day one isn't the most important thing i mean most of the votes i don't even think happen until until uh until post and edits are closed i don't know i've never actually i've never actually like seen a contest like this unfold besides maybe cupid con but like the the winner for cupid con got like barely a hundred up votes so anyway uh, from sender, subject, subject, <laughs> they sold it, I feel sick, this is before, the, I suppose this was before the thing in Komodo, but they must have, they must have known something was wrong, we were breathing it for years, it was in everything, and I helped, even if I was just logging data, I still helped, I probably logged the data of the sales, I, I, I should have examined every piece of data I mindlessly put into their system, I know this is where it all ends, really. My search ends here with the hellscape that we now call Earth. Germany. The accident. Please forgive me, Nick. Please don't stop talking to me. People here aren't doing well at the moment. Keeping in contact with you has kept me from losing it. I'll send what I can find from Germany when I find it. Please respond. I'm it. Administrator's office log. Ah, uh, they could have totally done the format that's like... That was in Cactus's Ouroboros cycle. That's like from the office of the administrator. Actually, nah, because that wouldn't fit the in. That needs to fit the entire article. We have like not much left to go. It's been about an hour. Whew, we're gaming. Date 20th of June 2073. Note this video and audio log is automatically transcribed using an AI from, an AI from security footage located inside the video itself. Begin log. The majority of the majority of lights in the office have been switched off. The only source of lighting is coming from a small lamp on the desk, at which the administrator sits, slowly looking through some documents. A few minutes later, the administrator's personal secretary, Martyr, enters. Administrator, do you want me to turn on the TV? I already know what happened in Germany. I don't need to be reminded. I think you do. The rest of the O5 board is scrambling and panicking, but you're just sitting here, sir. It's horrible. The whole city is just gone. All right, if you insist, turn it on. Martyr walks forward and pushes a button on the desk, which turns on a large television located in the wall in front of them. 
the television turned to an, the television is turned tuned to a European news channel, which is broadcasting footage of a monumental orange cloud on the horizon. Six thousand BF gone. No, wait. Six thousand BF gone, just like that. Millions of people in the city gone in a second. You need to concentrate on something, Administrator. I don't want to speak out of line, but you can't just sit in here. What can we coordinate? 6000 BF is now a crater in a cloud of orange smoke. There is nothing to coordinate here. Please, Administrator, I have friends who work in that city. If you don't come out and do something, and then I'm going to speak out of line. You shouldn't make friends in this organization, Martyr. You know that. I know about SF1. I know about everything. You don't know anything we haven't told you. You think just because my job is to file documents and get you coffee that I don't hear what's going on? What you are covering up? Covering up the entire purpose of the foundation is to cover up. It's the basis of our existence. <laughs> Not this. This is different. The mass die-offs? Entire groups of animals and plants just found dead? I know they've been getting more and more frequent. And now this? So, if you knew this all along, why didn't you get everyone you knew out of the cities? If you knew SF1 was doing all that, why didn't you do anything? Because you would have had me killed or amnesticized. I read that expedition log out of Siberia. You dug something out of the wilderness, and now we've paid the price. Paid the price? What price is that? 6,000 VF is gone. There we go. And the cloud of toxic SF1 is spreading out. Every plant and animal it comes into contact with is dying. And people, too. Look at the stream screen orange cobwebs spinning back and forth in the sky you haven't answered my question martyr it's it's the end of the world sf1 has been seeping into everything it touches for almost two decades now it's finally starting to take now it's finally starting to take its toll and do you think the end of the world was our fault who else's fault could it possibly be the natural world was dying anyway martyr maybe we just brought it forward 10 or 20 years Coal, oil, and gas were doing the heavy lifting for the last two centuries. We always knew what SF1 was doing, but we made life more livable for everyone in the brief years the world as we knew it would last. We gave the world shining cities of the future in the most beautiful natural landscapes on Earth. More people saw these places because of our cities than they ever would have without them. You cannot believe that. Of course I do, and so does the board. Perhaps SF1 was a temptation from the universe. Would we sacrifice that extra 20 years of enjoying the riches of nature, all for a brief glimpse of utopia? <laughs> I wouldn't. Yes, you would. It's in the human condition to take that temptation. We've had so many chances to reverse our destructive path, all of which we've missed without so much as a glance back in hindsight. I believe that our last chance was wasted long before we ventured into that pit in Siberia. So there's nothing we can do? No. I'm afraid. I expect a few more cities will go the way of 6,000 BF within a few months when the haze reaches them. The administrator switches off the lamp in the television and stands up. But you're right. I should at least try and put up a front. For the Foundation employees, at least. Come on. Let's go. The martyr and the administrator leave. The camera continues to run in the dark room. To Nick from a mad subject subject. I I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know. I should have known thousands of lines of data and i never looked at one properly maybe i could have done something maybe i could have told people and that's the worst thing i could have but now there's there's nothing it's it's all inevitable now anyway you didn't respond to my last email P please don't stop responding i can't really face anyone here at the moment it's just too much I, I can't face them because I knew that I played you even just a small part in the loss of everything that we know. I was sitting here while they took away birdsong. I was sitting here when they killed whales in the sea. Every piece of data I logged from the Foundation put more of that poison into plants and animals. And us. Or maybe it could have just happened without, maybe it would have just happened without me. Maybe there would have been another kid sitting in my chair the whole time logging that same data. An inevitable march to the end. Either way, please respond, Nick. I haven't left this room in four days. I'm spiraling bad. I, I just need to hear from you, Ahmed. To Nick from Ahmed. Subject, name is Ahmed. 
please respond to me. Any email is fine. Anything. If if you're if you're sending me something comforting or wishing death upon me, I I don't care. I just need you to respond. Every time I try and convince myself that this whole thing is bigger than me, I, I feel myself start to spiral. I, I I need to talk to someone outside here again. Please respond to me. Please respond to me. It, it wasn't my fault. Please just email back. I'm sorry. You, you can't treat me like this. I just needed a paycheck. Okay. I I didn't know what the foundation was doing. I didn't know that they were that they were killing everything. Please respond. I I, I can admit that this is my fault. M maybe the data I helped process would there maybe without the data I helped process there would have been less sales. M maybe maybe just please respond to me. Why the frick aren't you responding to me? Just respond to me. I just want any any response. They 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 dug precious things from the earth while I sat in an air conditioned room enjoying the spoils of their hubris. It burned the land and boiled the oceans. I deserve your silence. I know you won't respond to me, Nick. But I've never felt the need to write something more. When I was 10 years old, my parents took me and my brother to Yellowstone National Park. While we were there, I somehow wandered off from my family and became lost. I found a clearing which had a small, beautifully clear pond in the center. And as I watched, a large wolf came from the forest and took a drink from that pond. It didn't notice me. And in that moment, I felt a sense of peace that I've only felt a few times since but never since the foundation took the earth away. Today, <coughs> oh shoot, I'm dying. Today, I went for a walk. I, I can't face the people in my community, so I left early in the morning when everyone was sleeping. I thought I was never gonna come back from this walk. I thought I would just wander away from Manoa forever until what was once the canyon lands took me. Then, as I was walking, I came across an overhanging rock as I got closer, I realized that there was a passage in the overhang that was back deep inside it, a cave. My curiosity got the better of me, so I went inside. It was only a small cave, but when I got deeper inside it, it became too dark to see, so I had to use my phone's flashlight. When I shined my flashlight around, I realized the bottom of the cave was a pool of water. The cave was undoubtedly relaxing, it was so cool and so crisp. As I got closer to the pool and shined my flashlight inside, I could see movement. Small, shiny flickers of movement. There were fish, some kind of minnow, I guess, somehow peacefully living in this cave, when the lakes and rivers of the world were poisoned. In the center of the lake was a small skeleton, a bird. The fish were swimming around the skeleton, using it as a place to hide from my invasive flashlight. In that moment, I was back at Yellowstone, watching the wolf drink from the lake. That sense of peace, watching those fish dart back and forth. I watched them for hours, and then I stood up and left the cave. I walked back to Manoa, still feeling that peace hanging over me. But there was... there was more. There was hope. I don't believe mankind will last beyond a few decades now, but those fish in that cave? They'll last beyond us. Despite our best efforts, and our greed... They lived. And if they lived, then others have lived. I'll sleep soundly tonight, knowing that one day, once I'm long gone, there might be bird song ringing out above my grave. Rating plus 17, wow. Last edited three hours ago. Make that four since this video has been an hour long. Anyway, that is a Stairby's 6,000 proposal, Prophecies. Um, I was going to try and read, maybe not all of all of them, but I was going to try and read a couple, but that's just the first one listed. Uh, I don't know. Am I just going to like go down this list every day reading one? Maybe, probably. <laughs> uh, if I, if I find some shorter ones, I will, um, I will, I'll, I'll probably try and get two in. Maybe two in a day, but no, not two in a not two in the same video. Uh, I have never read anything by Sturby, and I have not read any other six thousand proposals, so I don't know how this one holds up. I think it was kind of long. Uh, pretty, yeah. It's a it's an okay story. I I don't know if it's really like the greatest 
SCP story of all time because like you know it didn't feel like I don't know it didn't really have that like that same thing as as uh, as most SCP documents have but then again I really do you know as you can see I have the daybreak canon linked up here I I I mean I like I like Shaggy Dreadlocks 001 proposal and that doesn't follow the format and it's like my favorite 001 proposal. Anyway, yeah, that was uh that was Stir by 6000 proposal prophecies. If you like the video, leave, leave a like. Um you know, please subscribe maybe. One subscriber special is coming when I think of something to do. Anyway, Spore will probably come out an hour after this goes up because I have no life outside of these. Yeah, anyway, um, that, that's about it. Bye.